This is Isaiah 45 and 7. It says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. I like to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostle elders, a great millstone who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. Once again, it's the brother Shakti from the Chicago camp. Coming back to you, what I hope is another quick and edifying sit down. And this preset was inspired by a story that I found on the interweb. It is from the Baltimore Sun. And it's entitled, Father of Unborn Son Charged with Killing Pregnant Woman and Toddler, Leaving Them in the Car in Southwest Baltimore. Yeah, you heard you, you heard you heard that right. This lady, I guess Cheyenne Miller and her three year old daughter mm -hmm. was killed by the baby daddy slash stepdad. And you know, this is a, a sad story. You know, I don't get any pleasure of you know, speaking on these things, but when you're in the truth, you have to recognize that this is the judgment of the Lord. And we're going to read that again. Isaiah 45 and 7, it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. And it just so happens that the Most High ordained judgment for all four of these people. All right. He ordered the mother to be killed, the daughter to be killed, the son to be killed, and eventually the stepdad slash baby daddy. All right. He's going to serve a life sentence in prison, I guarantee you. All right. Let's read this article. It says a 24 year old man has been arrested and charged with fatally shooting a pregnant woman with his unborn son and killing her three year old daughter then leaving them dead in her car parked in a southwest Baltimore neighborhood. Devon Sample, who lives with his grandmother in nearby Beachfield, gunned down Cheyenne Miller while she was eight months pregnant with his baby, police wrote in charging documents. Sample also allegedly shot and killed her three-year-old daughter, Shania Gilmore. Wow. Hmm. Let's just get to the meat of this. Hmm. Let's see. Sample was arrested and taken for a police interview. Officers also recovered surveillance cameras from the crime scene. The footage showed that around 11 p.m. Thursday, a black BMW pulled into the block, followed by Miller Subaru. Officers wrote that the BMW was registered to sample and they saw it parked Friday near his home. On the surveillance camera footage Thursday night, someone exited the BMW, went to the Subaru. A muzzle flash is observed from within the victim's vehicle. Officers wrote a second muzzle flash is observed outside of the driver's side of the vehicle. Then the BMW drives away, leaving the Subaru. When interviewed by officers, Sample initially denied being present at the scene, police wrote. Then they confronted him with the video and he admitted to driving the BMW, parking at the scene and sitting in the Subaru with Miller and her daughter. However, Mr. Sample claims he got into the car, left the area, and never saw the victims again, officers wrote. Ah, uh, yes. This fine, upstanding gentleman. There he is. They are charged him with first-degree murder of the deaths of Cheyenne Miller and her daughter, Shania. Let's see. Online court records show Sample has a drug case pending in Baltimore County, but no other criminal record. And then, of course, it's the background story with the daughter and the granddaughter. Mm. 
This year, 151 people have been killed in Baltimore, according to police statistics. 23 people have been killed this month, and 39 people in May, which was the deadliest month since 2015. Yeah, that's why they call Baltimore. Be more careful. All right. But yeah, there you have it. All right. You know, it's one of those things where a lot of these situations, a lot of these situations can be avoided if there was a man with wisdom inside the house, some type of instruction. Because you notice they said nothing about Cheyenne Miller's father. They said nothing about uh, what's that, uh, Mr. Uh, Sample, they said nothing about him having a father. Because statistics have proven that when there's a father in the house that got some sense about themselves, all right, the children usually grow up to be halfway decent. But seeing as our people are under certain spiritual handicaps, you know, we have to how should I put this? We have to make that much of a greater effort to try to get right with the Lord and do the right thing. Because in the majority of these households, they don't believe in the Lord. So the Lord just like, all right, I'm going to just give you up to these spiritual handicaps. And let's get that in the Bible. We're going to go to Deuteronomy 28. Is it 58? All right, Deuteronomy 28 and 54 says, So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom. Now that's very evil. For one day to just wake up and just say, you know what? I'm going to kill my baby mama, I'm going to kill her daughter, and I'm going to kill my unborn son. Or should I say murder? That's not killing, that's murder. All right? That's very evil. It takes a very evil person not only to take the life of somebody for will. We'll, for the, for my explanation, we'll just give her the benefit of a doubt and just say no reason, even though the scripture always says nobody perish being innocent. But let's just say for no reason. All right. It takes an evil person to do that to somebody else. Not only that, to the woman that's carrying your son, your son's about to come out the womb in a month, maybe a month and a half. And you put her to death with your son? That is evil. And so it says, His eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. That child didn't stand a chance. See, these are the certain handicaps that, as Israelites, we have to strive that much harder to do the best that we can. Because, as you can clearly see, when there's no man in the household, these type of things happen. You have children that grow up with no instruction and they're out of order and they grow up as adults and they have absolutely no understanding. See, if there was a father in the household with this woman, okay, she would know that, you know what? Something's not right with this Mr. Sampler guy. Maybe I ought to just leave him alone. Because when there's a father in the household, 
he can instruct his daughter in a way that's righteous. He can instruct her in a way like, hey, this is what you look for when you want a man. But when there's no man, this is what happens. Two, three generations of women with no instruction. Just like on the other hand, you got two, three generation of a single mother household with boys. And then you have boys that physically grow up to look like a man, but their emotional makeup is of a woman because they had no instruction. And the, this is how crimes like this happen. No fear of the Lord, no instruction, no wisdom on how to go about life. That you know what? That's why I say this. Let me uh, let me get that, and I'll end it on this. It would help to spell instruction right. Let's see. Yeah, this is a few good ones on this side. Let me get Ecclesiasticus 1 and 27. Why isn't why not? Why not? Ecclesiasticus 1 and 27. It says, For the fear of Yahweh is wisdom and instruction and faith and meekness are his delight. So When you have children that are brought up under the wisdom and guidance of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and there's a man in the house to teach them these things, you're not going to get these results. You will have people that are raised in the way that they should. Even the scripture says that uh, train up a child. Yeah, I thought I was going to end on that one, but nonetheless. Train up a child. Let's do train and child. Proverbs 22 and 6 and it says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. And that's really it. You know. That's all these people need is just instruction in the way of the Lord and then Tragic situations like this would be few and far in between. So, <clears throat> this is a, uh, you know, it's sad to hear uh, of stories like this, but, you know, it is the judgment of the Lord. And it's one of those things that when you come into the truth, this is a, uh, this is one of those things that could create a huge stumbling block. And if by chance this does present itself as a stumbling block to you, please just pray to the Lord that he gives you the understanding and wisdom to know that, as I said before, this is all his will. This is not uh, our show. This is the Lord's show and what he says goes. So that's all I want to say on this. Uh, once again, giving all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. 
Double honors to the apostle elders, a great millstone who rule well, and salutations to all you brothers out there mm -hmm. pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. With that, we're going to say Shalom. Shalom.